And what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy, Cheap Ludes. Happy 2K Day. Hooray! The question is, what should you do first in NBA 2K23, my team? I keep wanting to say 2K22. When you record that many videos about a game, it's hard to really change your vocabulary, to be honest. So, either way, it can be a little daunting when you first jump in the game because it's like, you know, we're all so used to endgame in 2K22 where we all have stacked teams, we all know what we're doing, etc. So it's like, what should you do first? Basically to maximize your time and to maximize the fun that you're having as well because like that's literally the point of playing video games. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like people take 2K a little serious sometimes, you know, to the point where we're like treating it more as like a job, I guess, than an actual like game that we're playing for fun so i suppose what should you do first now conventional wisdom says to go straight for you know agenda etc etc and i would say yeah to a certain extent but i mean you'll be able to complete agendas just kind of organically based on the agendas that we have you know a lot of them are going to be game specific uh, for the most part but we'll kind of go into what you should actually do one thing i will tell you to avoid immediately is limited now from what i understand it more than likely has been fixed the limited glitch um essentially what happened yesterday people were playing on nz servers and they were winning limited games and they were getting bricked out of the game right now i cannot confirm for sure if this <clears throat> has been removed or isn't happening anymore um I haven't seen anybody post about it still happening, so I mean, I would assume that it's probably gone, but at the same time, you don't really want to start with limited anyway, so it is what it is. Now, the first thing I always recommend starting, especially right when you begin, is triple threat offline. The reason I say start with triple threat offline is just because you can pretty much come in here with anyone, you know, anyone that you're starting with, and you can go ahead and get easy wins. Right, this will allow you to get some tokens, some MT, etc. The vault seems to be opening at least a little bit more than 2K22, so it looks like they did increase the amount that it actually opens. I mean, you're still getting two tokens, 500 MT majority of the time, but you know, you are at least going to like get something for the most part, you know? Is it going to be opening? Are you going to be getting Lamar Odom consistently? I mean, if you're me, no, but like maybe if it, for you, possibly. Now, once you start building a team, you know, then that's when you're going to want to go and do some other stuff, right? Personally, and this is my personal opinion, you may find this to be incorrect, or you may think that maybe you have a different view on it. I personally think domination is not worth doing in any way, shape, or form. The reason I say that is because it's five-minute quarters. There's like, Jesus, so many games, dude, right? <laughs> like, so many games to actually do. Now, you could do 33 stars, 33 stars, 33 stars, and then get up to Havelcheck, so it's not quite as many games. You're not, you know, having to play, what, like, so many, dude. I can't even count at this point. Like, 33 games apiece. Like, you're not going to have to do that. Um, you can obviously play, you know, what, 10? Yeah, 10 games each or something. I don't even know. I can't even do math right now. I'm, like, so tired. Um, 11. 11 games each. So, I mean, in that case, it can be worth it. Though you are going to have to play every single one to get Havelcheck. I I don't know. I just feel like this is a lot. And there's a lot of tips. I mean, you can do it going to player control where you can control one single player and you can make the game a little bit easier. You can essentially space out for like the last half of the game. But at the same time, I still feel like it's a really long grind for no reason. And let's be real here. There's going to be packable cards that are better than Havelcheck in two weeks, right? We know that. Um, he's still going to be very good and very usable for a bit, but at the same time, like you're going to be able to get someone just as good in a week's time, probably just out of packs. He's going to be expensive for sure. Obviously, you know, the general trade-off with my team is either money or time, right? And we all know that's how it works, but I, I would say maybe avoid doing domination. It it's just like very ridiculously long grind. Instead, I would probably just start playing like triple threat offline. And then once you get a better team, you know, once you get like a nice five, switch over to clutch time, dude. Clutch time single player is really fun. I've been having a really good time with clutch time single player for sure. I have I only played about four games last night, just chilling, but I'm a big fan of the single player component this year. I think it's really good. And I think it's a really good thing to start out with, right? Because you could come out here with just basically not even the greatest team in the world, and you can like pretty much just hold it down. Because just like Triple Threat Offline, they're going to match you, you know, similar gem tiers. So 
I mean, it's 2K. Like, they're going to spite you a couple times. Like, it's going to be higher than your gem tier, which is really annoying. But at the same time, like, it, it's just fun. Once you get a nice 13 that you can confidently run, go do this Jordan signature challenge for sure because you do get a Hoth badge and a shoe and stuff like that. Um, the spotlight challenges will get you XP, so it's worth doing once you start unlocking these players. Speaking of which, I wanted to... Uh, Oh, and the skill challenge. You have to complete three of these for a limitless pack, which, I mean, they're not the worst thing in the world, but they do definitely get frustrating for sure. And then these will get you some additional stuff, like some post scoring, some badges, you know, some tokens, etc. whatever. One thing I wanted to point out about the agenda, though, is the... Some of this stuff is getting ridiculous out here. These aren't that bad. You could do these in, like, triple threat or clutch time or whatever, and you should have, like, a reasonable amount of success doing that. But these spotlight ones, like, I have to get 10 assists with Steve Kerr in a game four times for 500 XP. Four times? Oh, my God. I got to score 20 points in the paint with Bill Cartwright five singular times. I don't think Bill Cartwright scored 20 points in the paint five times in his career. I'm sorry. I'm not even certain if that's accurate or not. I mean, it might not be. Maybe he was a baller. I just didn't know about it. But Jesus Christ, 30 points in a game with Kukoc six times. This seems a bit excessive is all i'm gonna say i gotta get six rebounds 10 times it's actually not that bad for horace grant but still kind of like annoying three dunks with fred jones five times that's actually not that bad fred fred jones be dunking dude for sure now you'll get some cards organically like if you go over the lifetime um you do get fred jones just for playing 10 games like you don't even have to win you just have to play 10 games you get fred jones fred jones is really good he pre-ordered the championship i think at least the jordan edition you get a ruby jordan and he's faster than pretty much everyone else in the game so he's very helpful you get booker for starting as well booker is very very good one card that i think is maybe not underrated but i think is absolutely worth copying and it's gonna sound weird because it's not someone that you would think but like kiki vanderwee dude i couldn't tell you much about the sigs in this game uh the database just got updated um this morning okay so here's the thing though kiki vanderwee is ridiculous like his jump shot is so smooth at least on next gen i haven't messed around with current gen all that much as of yet but kiki is very smooth and he's going to be a very reliable shooter and he's going to be able to stroke for you and in a time when it's very difficult uh for a lot of cards to really stroke like that kiki vanderwee can hold it down dude this is my boy right here like i love kiki vanderwee he's one of only a few sapphires in this tier um but he has you know not the greatest he has a de default swing lower base which is like all these jump shots are different but i mean it's a really good base actually like and a lot of cards have it surprisingly like grant hill uh del curry has it draws petrovich is like a promo reward that you can get as well definitely want to open your promo reward packs too because you can get like a lot of stuff out of this but kiki vanderwee is a relatively cheap card um you know you can get them for looks like his price is spiked it looks like everyone knows about this kiki vanderwee life out here apparently like kiki what did dbg make a video god damn it he's really good um another guy that i think is really underrated and really solid is uh kelly Trapuka. Kelly Chapuka is nice. I graded my Kelly, Kelly Chapuka, you know what I mean? By the way, don't grade cards. I'm just, I feel like doing it because it's fun, but it's never a good idea. Look, I got a near mint Kristaps Porzingis. <laughs> Sick. You doing seven on my Steve Kerr? Disrespectful. Eight, eight on my Kelly Chapuka. I can mess with that. Kelly's going to get some minutes for sure. Now let's look at some other things that you can do that I think are really, really cool. Um, there's actually the prize balls. The prize balls, surprisingly, I don't think I have any at the moment. But uh, once you start to get the prize balls, just slot them in. Uh, go to your lineup management. Go over to your franchise and slot them in as your ball. I don't have any right now. You're going to get them out of, like, packs and stuff like that. But they'll end up giving you more rewards. I think I've only gotten MT and tokens out of the couple that I've broken so far. But it's free stuff, so it is what it is. Um, another thing that I recommend doing, which I actually I don't know where it's at. Oh, exhibitions. Exhibitions, I think, are worthwhile for sure. The reason I say that is because you get a bunch of stuff out of here, right? Like, is it going to be the greatest stuff in the world? No, not necessarily. But, like, are you going to be able to get free stuff out of here? Of course. Yeah. And I, I've done a few of them already. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot going on here as far as the prizes in general. It's just extra MT and stuff like that. But, I mean, if it's stuff that you're... I'm going to send Shaq, bro, because I'm not using Shaq. Oh, wait, I might use Shaq, actually. No, I use Bill Cartwright. I'll send... 
send Shaq Diesel out here. Right? I don't know how long this is going to take. Looks like it's going to take three hours. Three days. Okay. So maybe maybe don't throw anyone that you really care too much about. Uh, you know, like, I just lost Shaq for three days, which is unfortunate. I mean, I probably won't use him that much. But, you know, throw some Bullets players out here. Like, I'll throw Kobe White and Ao and Drummond out here. Like, it is what it is. I'm not going to be using these guys anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, and this should last about four hours, I believe, is what these last. Yeah, so these last about four hours. It's very similar to grading cards. Um, but if you have the extra cards, you know, you have, like, Pelicans players or anything of that nature, like, it's worth doing it because it's just free stuff, right? It'll take some time. You know, you won't have those cards, but it's whatever. Let's talk about the token market, all right? The token market sucks this year. I stand firm on that. I've seen some people praising it. I don't like it. And I'm in a kimono, so what's up? But, like, I hate it right i despise it i do because you can only get current series guys and also they don't show you what's in the packs by the way but i mean obviously you can use the database and you can kind of assume who's in what packs um i keep messing with my hair because it keeps turning into a johnny bravo situation and i like don't want that i don't want to look like a greaser i'm not in like an alley snapping and singing doo-wop so i would prefer if it would stop doing that but it is what it is certain teams are going to have worse cards obviously but essentially the more expensive you're getting a starter you know the two tokens are getting the bench unit now i started with clippers to get Kawhi because it was 20 tokens right um, most people i feel like are going to probably start with the bucks or the nets so they can get Giannis or like kevin durant right um and that's not really a bad idea honestly it, it's not i'm gonna go ahead and start with the bulls and the reason being is because of the trophy case now the trophy case is I'm not a fan of what's going on with these trophy cases because, dude, the grind for these is absurd. Like, the grind for these is ridiculous. Like, and yes, the cards are cool. Like, Derek Rose. I mean, I went through these on my stream. You can check that out, but I'll go through them again. Like, the cards are cool. And I'm going to go through and actually look at the SIGs, too, and kind of go from there. Um, but I would just look through all these and just kind of look what card do you want. You know what I mean? Like, what card do you want? That's the one you should go for, because realistically, these are going to be really rough. And if you're going to start going for the Opals, I would start kind of just going within that division, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going for Derrick Rose first, so I'm going to start going for the Central. So, like, I'm going to go for Rip Hamilton, uh, which is cool, actually. Il Gauskis. The Central actually is pretty good. Uh, Brandon Jennings sucks. They did Brandon Jennings dirty again and gave him big man sakes, which, like... Why they keep doing this, I don't know. Jermaine O'Neal is kind of trash, too. But, you know, you're getting three good guys. No Gauskas, Derek Rose, and Rip Hamilton should be good, you know. If you want to go for some other ones, Bargani looks really good. Um, Richard Jefferson looks okay. Kyle Korver actually looks really solid, too. Looking at the West, like, the Clippers suck. Uh, Zach Randolph, okay. Gordon Hayward, I just feel like there's guys better, but, you know. Peja, with an improved jump shot, actually looks really solid. Um, Worthy looks good. Manu looks whatever. I don't know about his jump shot. Steve Francis is probably pretty good. Chauncey Billups, by the way. You know, all this talk of, like, changing jump shots and making jump shots different. You know, different players are going to have different jump shots. Chauncey Billups still has the same terrible-ass jump shot. And I just want to say that that's messed up. You change the jump shots for everyone else, but Chauncey still has a terrible jump shot disrespectful i mean chauncey has a slow release for sure watching him play like he had a very slow release in real life i understand that but god damn it all right brandon ingram right, that's my boy though matumbo looks cool michael finley looks all right steve nash is steve nash like russell westberg actually probably looks good he's probably one of the better people too they did change his jump shot i heard it's good wally zerbiak has that same release as vander Wee, which is a very good release arvita sabonis looks like a monster dude i don't think anyone's going to be able to stop him in the paint so he might be a good way to start as well Jordan Poole can't play point guard, which I think is kind of whack, but I don't know. The exchanges are mostly, there's actually no players in the exchanges, just like the, the, uh, essentially just like, I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry. Just like the token market, there's no actual players that you can get from here, which I think sucks. And the reason I say that is because I like getting the random guys from like the token market and the exchange and stuff. And it's like kind of whack that they do that. There's a lot of exchanges for sure. I'm not sure if any of them are necessarily worth it, um, if I'm being honest. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, but it looks like maybe. I mean, you can exchange for balls and stuff, which is kind of cool in stadiums, I guess. Like, And then there's the player packs. I don't know if these are worth it. The Amethyst one is probably worth it. 
you exchange Ruby players, you know, you can get the Amethyst guys, and the Amethyst guys do lock in for stuff, so. And then if you, uh, you know, exchange all these badges, you get a Hoff badge. I'm not sure if it's 100% worth it at this point, because you're probably just going to get, like, a badge that isn't very good, but at the same time, like, you know. And then there's obviously all the trophy case exchanges, which you'll get these for playing the game, essentially. Once again, like I said, card grading, probably not worth it if I'm being honest, but I'm going to do it just for funsies. You know, who, who cares? It, it doesn't matter really that much. I'm still mad about the token market. I really am. It looks like they're going to be updating it pretty frequently, but I guarantee they put heat check cards in here. I just, any amount of money says that they do that. I just, I feel it. You know what I mean? Don't ask me why. I just really do. I feel it. I'm interested. So if you lock in all the coaches, you actually get head coaches like Kareem. Um, if you lock in Kareem and Rodman, you get uh, Jerry West. So that's cool, you know. Um, there's a Michael Jordan player coach as well. I don't know how to get that exactly, but, you know, it is what it is. That's cool. I don't know. There's a lot going on this year, and there's a lot of stuff. The MT Shoe Lab is back. Don't worry. In case you guys really, you know, wanted to get the MT Shoe Lab, you know, it's still here. Don't, don't worry about that. There's pri These are the prize balls. Sorry, yeah. And I don't know what any of these are, if they're even in the game yet. The WNBA logo stuff has. And if you go play the W, you know, you'll get some of that. I think the Michael Jordan player coach, it might be from the Jordan challenges, actually. Um, collector level, there's only three so far. John Stockton, Joe Keem, and Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson looks good. I believe you're able to get him right now, but that's a grind. Patrick Ewing, Jimmy Butler, Gilbert Arenas, Clyde Drexler, Anthony Davis, and Chris Paul are the Opals. You're only able to get one in season one, I believe. So that's going to be tough. You know, dominations, whatever. The good thing is, by the way, you can actually look at the cards without owning them now, uh, which is huge. Uh, all you got to do is click in on the stick and you're able to look at the cards in full without having them, which is cool. Uh, Bill Walton, by the way, might actually be pretty good. I still don't think he's worth grinding Damo for, but he might be decent. I might grind up to Mitch Richmond just because Mitch Richmond's my boy. You know what I mean? And he looks okay. Uh... Does he have Limitless? Oh, they did him dirty. Never mind. How about Julius Randle? I didn't even look at Julius Randle, like, for sure. Oh, I thought that said pork sausage. <laughs> Don't ask, bro. <laughs> Julius Randle looks all right. You know, the gameplay is very good this year. Um, very heavy, very weighty. I kind of went through it a little bit during my stream. I might do a gameplay video later. It just kind of depends. Um, other than that, there's Season 1 cards in the Limitless set. Locks in for 200 tokens, which is definitely going to be helpful for sure. So the spend money crackheads are definitely going to be winning. If you get all these, you get Chris Mullen and Kevin Love. And you get all these, you get a mystery diamond player, which, like, that's pretty sick. And I don't know exactly how to get these. Like, I think you just buy them. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but that's cool. I think these only come out of, like, promo packs, I think. I'm not sure where these come from. But either way, like, if you lock them in, you get a mystery diamond. I don't really know what's up with that, but uh, I'm sure someone's locked it in by now. So if you guys know what's in there, please do comment down below. As always, it's been your boy Cheap Ludes. Thank you for watching the video. I'll be back with more content later. This move has taken a lot out of me, so I haven't been making as much content as I wanted to at the beginning of 2K23, but I appreciate you guys rocking with me regardless. Um, shout out to my new attic dungeon room that I have yet to... Uh, you know de decorate it all it looks like i'm out here being held captive it looks like i'm out here hiding from the germans right now shout out to my family in the 30s yo we out here we made it you know what i mean so uh i'll be back later man peace